Hi, I'm Mr. Pink, and in today's video, we're going to talk about how to sculpt spino columns. Anyway, while I got my tools all plasticined up, um, I guess it's a good chance to show kind of a macro version of sculpting spines. Um, you're not going to do them in this size unless you're sculpting some kind of Tyranid Leviathan. Or scenery, actually, if you're sculpting Tyranid scenery, this would be a really good indication of how to do it. Um, so I'm going to do it with plasticine and make it massive so that you can see the whole process. Um, and then I'll go on to do it micro, so you can see that too. Um, plasticine is gross, well, it's fun, but it's not in any way like green stuff. It's kind of like epoxy sculpt in terms of texture um, and the kind of performance you're going to get out of it. So it's not going to respond the same way that green stuff would. But let's just say this is a giant tube of green stuff. So you've put it on the back of your, your trusty um, grotesque and you want to make it get into one of these. So what you do, you take the snake, green stuff snake, you put it on the thing's back and then what you want to do is you want to go along these edges, kind of like underneath, and mesh it into the thing's back. So with your fingers, you can go like this, but what I usually use is the Beal Wax Carver Elevator Tool, I don't know, Spoon Tool. So what I'll do is I'll take the spoon and I'll just kind of go along the edge like this to mesh it into the creature's back. Um, you also kind of want a little bit of, because the spine is pulling away from the creature's back, so what you want is a little bit of a concave shape underneath so that it looks like this, this kind of um, cylinder that's pulling away from it. So yeah, you go along the edges with the spoon tool, or you can, if you have one, and you all should, uh, you can go along the edges with a silicone brush. That is amazing, because you can just paint in the gap there. So you just do that, and then once it's like meshed in, you guys can't see it, because you're looking from above. And now you do the very important next step, which um, my Norn Queen affectionately refers to cutting dimples into the thing technique, is you take your knife tool, and what you want to do is you want to mark the sections of the spine all the way along it. So you just start at one end and you just literally say how big you want your um, spine sections, I guess we call them vertebrae, to be. Just go along like this, cut it in, cut it in, cut it in. You're just marking it along the top, you don't have to get it all the way down. Do not cut it like you're cutting the snake, that would be bad. Um, yeah, just a lot light, not lightly, but kind of push them into the top like this all the way across, all the way to the end, not going all the way down, because what you're gonna do is you're gonna clean up the edges after. Um, so once you've got them marked out, you can kind of go along the edges with this tool. Um, again, you don't wanna cut all the way through because it'll mess stuff up, but you can kind of go down the edges and extend those sections all the way to the part where you've meshed it into the creature's body. Okay, um, normally when I'm sculpting, I'm holding the model so I can turn it around and do the other side. Um, but I don't want to turn this thing around because that's a pain in the ass. So I'm going to eyeball it on that side and it's going to be gross, but this side will probably be okay. So what you want to do is make them look a little more like vertebrae. And what I tend to do with the, the um, silicone brush tool is that I just kind of go over them like this. Again, this is a massive piece of plasticine and it's not going to perform the way the green stuff does, and it's also way bigger. But basically, you go along each section, I'm rolling them out here, and you make a, a concave down the, the middle of each vertebrae to make it look more spine-like. So I can just do it with my fingers because this tool is not big enough. So just kind of... Yeah, what you'd be doing with your green stuff, you'd be going like this, like this, like this, like this. And with this being the right size, it would go all the way along. Another thing you can do, um, if you don't have one of those, but you have one of these, a uh, ball burnisher tool. Again, this is not big enough, but I'll do it micro here. You can just literally go along each spinal section, dabbing like this. So you're not leaving ball shapes, you're just leaving kind of like dents, and that will do it for you. So what that looks like is kind of like, going like this a whole bunch of different times with your ball thing. So you go all the way down the section, making these things a little concave in the middle, and they're gonna, they're, this is gonna happen, they're gonna get mashed together. Um, you don't need to apply quite that much pressure, but don't worry, we can fix that. Um, so you just wanna get these concave shapes down each spinal section. 
And then they should start looking a little bit more like vertebrae. Um, again, use this, go like this, all the way across them. Get, make sure you have lubricant on there, water or Nivea. Um, sorry, not Nivea, uh, hand cream, any hand cream. And just go along them like this and it'll perform wonders on something that is the correct size. If you really lube up one of these, you can also do that, but the metal tends to catch a little bit. Um, so the easier way is just to tap, 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 all the way across. It won't be as uniform as the other tool, but hey, that might give it some character. Okay, so I'm gonna just work in the middle of this because this thing is ridiculously large and it's pissing me off. So if it gets to a situation like this where you're you've gone across and you've kind of pushed them and maybe you're using epoxy sculpt, which is more yielding, um, or maybe you just got really fresh green stuff and it's kind of done this thing where they've, they've molded together at the, the vertebrae gaps that we just cut, don't worry about it because you can just do it again. Um, and when you cut them again, it's gonna be a lot less likely to kind of mess up all the work that you've done. So you can, you can still see them faintly, so just kind of go through and Mark them out again. Again, on the right size model, this would just be one touch, one touch, and you'd have it done. And then what you do next is that you want to take the, your knife tool, and the same way that you're cutting like this, you've got this nice point on it, and you've got this nice shape here. So what you do is you go to the base of the spine, and you poke in underneath. Follow this line down, and with that point, blade facing up, push in underneath. Blade facing up, push in underneath, in underneath. And what that does is it kind of gives the impression that it, it helps with the pulling, the spine pulling away from the body vibe. Um, so do that. Um, and then the other thing to do is though we went by the first time and we kind of went like this with either the silicone brush or the spoon tool to make it kind of look like it's, it's flushing into the body. Um, you're gonna, you wanna emphasize that these are spinal sections and that they are pulling away from the body. So what you wanna do is you wanna take the right size ball burnisher. You can also do this with a silicone brush. I've done it before. And just like where you took the knife tool and you poked in on the, the, the cuts between the sections, what you wanna do now is you wanna go onto the actual section that you've made all nice and concave with your properly sized tools. And you wanna go to kind of the base of that um, and with the knife tool, you kind of like did like a really hard cut. With this at the base of each one of these vertebrae sections, you want to kind of push in at the bottom. So kind of, again, not the proper tool for the job, but um, you can see there that I'm poking in at the base of each one of them. Poking in at the base of each one of them. Poking in at the base of each one of them. Um, flat, uh, make it kind of like a gradual transition up this way but more of a harsh transition down this way. Because like we said, that spine is pulling away from the body. This skin should stay kind of on that level and then this curves up. Try to continue that curve shape. Got, you have this shape continuing, this curved um, shape that goes all the way down and into here. So you can kind of see that. I don't know, I can see it from my angle. Can you see it from your angle? It's kind of starting to look like a spinal column. The other thing you can do is that you can leave it more or less like this. And then all you do afterwards is you go through and you kind of like clean up these sections, the, the gaps between to make sure they're, because you want them to be fairly sharp. Down here, you want you don't want a sharp gap all the way to the skin. Down at this end, you want it to kind of like be all kind of like messed up and like, oh, where's the skin start? Where's the spine end? Oh, I don't really know. Um, but you definitely want these cuts here to show you it's a spinal spon column. So you kind of mesh all this into the model down here. Silicone brush, amazing for this. But if you have one of these, you can use that too. This is kind of like the silicone brush before you get the silicone brush. Um, I feel like there's a Zelda reference in there. There's like the master sword and that's like the angry giant sword or whatever. Um, you can do it with this, but it's just that it has a hard edge. So sometimes it catches a hard edge. So yeah, mesh it all in down here. And then you can do the thing here where you poke them in. Yeah, we went over that. Um, so this is pretty much good to go. I know it doesn't look it because it's gross and made of plasticine, but the only other thing to do is make sure that these, if you want just like quick and dirty spines, make sure these sections are well cut, well defined. Um, if you want to be fancy, you can kind of try your luck. Again, you're going to be much smaller. Round them a little bit along the edges because you don't want them to look like they were cut out of a machine. You want them to look like bone sections, so just kind of like go along the edges of your cuts with something to round them. You can, if you have a small enough silicone brush, you can do it, like a, a really little one. Um, 
One silicone brush that I highly recommend that I picked up is this wedge shape. So you can see that it's point like that and it's flat like this. This is brilliant for doing this because it's soft. It's not as hard as the um, knife tool. In fact, you probably could have done this from the beginning with one of these instead of the knife tool. And then you can very easily just like flip the edges and make them more, um, more organic here. So at this point, you're pretty much done. What I do is to give, if you look at this dude, I don't know if you can really see, but it's not just a straight line. There's this, these gaps in here. I like that effect. I don't really know that it's, it holds up in biology. So you can see it there. So I just go and in these gaps, just poke a hole in the middle of each gap and it makes it look like some kind of messed up spinal column. So just go like that, all the way across. See him? Next level thing that I do sometimes, um, if I'm feeling saucy, is that the same thing that you put this gap down here, on our spinal column, or if you look on the, um, the talus or whatever spinal columns, there's actually a ridge that runs down here. I don't do that if I'm lazy, but you can make that ridge. It's just more silicone brush. It's just like you did down here, but instead of, you do it at the top of the piece. So you just go like this. And you do that on either side. Again, I'm neglecting this side because I don't care. Um, so you push it on either side and what you're doing is you're pushing this material into the middle so it's starting to come up. If you don't have a silicone brush, you can use one of these, a ball elevator tool, um, and then just use like the smaller one to get in right in there. Oh, sorry, ball elevator, ball burnisher tool. Um, and you can kind of push up the material with one of these as well. And it, it gets that ridge down the middle. Um, I wouldn't worry about connecting them, I don't care. If you do, you can try and connect them over the gap. It's just going to get messy. Uh, they're connected underneath. Who cares? And then just kind of smooth these out um, so it looks natural and spinal column-y with this ridge in the middle. It's kind of a cool effect. It's a little more grotesque. <laughs> yeah, just smooth that out so it's not so extreme. It doesn't look like you just poked a hole in it. So that gives another effect. So you have this here, you have the gap there. And yeah. So just kind of go down and remark these. And then you're, you're pretty much done. Again, very rough because giant, but I just wanted to show you the, the kind of techniques that go into making a spinal column. So yeah, go to work, do it. If you don't do it, you're never gonna learn how. So you gotta mess around with some green stuff or some epoxy sculpt. These things are really easy to do once you get practice. So, good luck. All right, we just went over how to do this big. So now let's do this small. This is gonna be sped up a bit, but this is gonna be more to scale that you'd actually be doing it on a miniature. So you can see here I'm using the uh, Beale Wax Carver to mesh it into the model. Um, kind of smooth it out, pretending that we've got a creature underneath here. So you can see how it's got that kind of like sausage that's been blended into the torso. Okay, so then I get the uh, the wax, uh, no, sorry, the silicone brush, and I'm just kind of like smoothing that out. This is the best tool for the job. You can just run that along each side of that sausage, and it, just like that, it gets a really good kind of indent at the bottom. See, I'm just painting it there. Okay, smoothing it out, smoothing it out. Just get these tools, they'll save your life every time. So next up, I'm gonna grab the knife tool, and I'm gonna cut the sausage and show the the little sections between the different vertebrae. I'm gonna clean up the sides here, like I've already shown, by going down each side. And, just, and I'm gonna poke in at the bottom to, to get that pulling away from the body effect. I'm gonna poke in at the bottom here as well. And I'll go back with the this tool and kind of make the different vertebrae kind of curved in the middle or concave in the middle, and then make that little poke in at the bottom of them that makes it really look like it's pulling away from some stretched skin there. So you can see I'm poking at the bottom and then smoothing uh, each vertebrae to make them kind of concave, convex, god I'm not even sure, and then cleaning up at the bottom again to make it kind of like meshed in, that pulling away skin effect at the bottom. You can see it there as well. Uh, yes, and next I'm going to go and poke those uh, divots at the top using the kind of uh, the pointier, it's not a knife tool, but you could use a knife tool for it, and that just kind of gives it more of a vertebrae look. And then again, going with the 
um, silicone brush and making them into more kind of vertebrae shape. You can do this as much or as little as you want. Sometimes I do it more, sometimes I do it less. I think I'm doing it a little too much here. Um, they're a little too defined, so I might smooth it out a bit more. But really it's up to you like what you want your spine to look like. Every time I do these I pretty much change it, so there's no perfect answer. That's pretty close. Uh, I could go in and clean it up a bit more with the knife tool, but yeah, or uh, poke those in a little more with a pokey tool. And I think we're almost done now. Now it's just getting finicky, cleaning it up. Once again, I'm Mr. Pink from the blog Modern Synthesis, and thanks for watching this less drunk, less midget filmed video on how to sculpt spinal columns. Next video, we're going to get into something that I love most of all, sculpting sutures and stitches. Stay tuned for a really unique recipe that uses a really weird tool on this thing that's much easier to do than you might think it is. Yo, close the door! I'm filming here! So just redo the gaps. That's my dad pissing in the background. Lovely. Fucking can't work anywhere.